I will trust in you. There's a lesson there. It's for all ages too, by the way. No one's exempt from this. I will trust in you by Lauren Daigle. It's, uh, it's refreshing because that's something that we all have to work on. It's not, a, it's not an arrival, it's a journey to trust in him in whatever we do. And the younger you are, the more time you have to build on that trust. Amen? Amen. Us old fogies, let me assure you, we're still working on it. I'm speaking for me, Carol. <laughs> we're still working on that trust thing. It's a journey. It's not a destination. And to give it to him through the obstacles, the pains, the struggles, the surgeries, the difficulties, the challenges, to trust. The word of trust. What do we trust in in this world? What do you trust in? What do I trust in? This morning I trust that we will be blessed by our guests this morning with Valerie Tennyson. Did I say that correctly? Anna. Yes. <laughs> and Nathan Holman. Uh, we will be blessed by their uh, comments and thoughts. We have, this church has been well connected with their program, uh, Future Business Leaders of America, uh, through the Lake George school system. Uh, I believe, Carol, you were on a committee at some point. I was an advisor when I taught at not this high school, but okay. RCS. And we also have viewing live this morning from Florida, Kyle and Linda Madison. Uh, they are very intrigued with this program, as I have communicated with them often throughout the winter. But I have some comments that uh, Linda sent me because she had heard that we were supporting this group and more importantly, the impact that it had on their lives. I'm quoting, I'm so pleased to see the Lake George approve the gift to the FBLA group at the high school. FBLA was a huge part of mine and Kyle's high school experience. We were both very active members. I was CT State Secretary and Kyle ran for Eastern Region Vice President. Sounds pretty important. He didn't win, but we had a great time prepare, preparing him for the experience, making up brochures, etc. We did so many volunteer activities, fundraisers, traveled, and met so many great people. So they're, they're watching from Florida as we speak. Uh, we live Zoom this so other folks can join in. And I would ask our guests to come forward and, and each one of them to state their name, uh, maybe what they're majoring in, uh, what this program means to them. And uh, yeah, feel free to come right up. We have a mic right up above, so be careful when you whisper something to me. No. <laughs> no. Uh, uh, you could uh, clearly state your name, maybe what you're majoring in, and, and what impact this program has had on each one of you, or what do you see it, in the future of it in your lives together. So I'm going to sit down here as I enjoy. Well, first, we just want to say thank you for welcoming us here today. Um, my name is Valerie Tennyson. Right now, I'm a junior at Lake George Junior Senior High School, so I don't know my major yet. <laughs> I'm Nathan Holman. I'm a senior. I plan to uh, major in business administration at UAlbany this uh, coming uh, uh, fall semester. Um, my name is Anna Kiki, and I'm also a junior, so I don't know what I'm majoring in yet. So I'm happy to see that some people are familiar with what FBLA is. FBLA, Future Business Leaders of America, is actually the largest student-run organization in the country at the moment. Um, within Lake George uh, is the largest student organization uh, for the high school as well. And it really just tries to uplift service, community, leadership, and educational values within young leaders. So we are fortunate enough to have a chapter within our school and pretty much what we strive to do is just bring the school community together 
through fun events and just learning opportunities. Um, I think back to this past week, it was actually National FBLA week and we did like a scavenger hunt around the school and we gave away prizes and then we also wanted to revamp our chapter's logo. So we did a logo contest and we gave away a $50 gift card. So just small things like that, we try to get students and members involved as much as we can. Uh, as you guys seen, we, the snowmen throughout the village that we uh, we actually run and kind of work with the uh, Department of Public Works to uh, fund that project that we can have students come in and paint and spend community service hours working on that. And we also do a food drive at our school, and uh, over the last few years we've uh, brought in thousands of uh, canned goods for homeless shelters and stuff throughout the area. We do that with uh, Sacred Heart, so we're just happy to interact with the community and give back to it. And for the Snowman fundraiser, that's actually our biggest fundraiser of the year. And we use all the money to offset the cost of states. And a state, the state leadership conference is pretty much where our members compete in different events. And they can qualify for nationals there. And nationals is in Atlanta, Georgia this year. But last year it was in Chicago and 11 members went. And it was a lot of fun. From this high school? Alone? Yes. Wow, that's awesome. And our school uh, completely covers the cost for nationals. but. Um, we use our treasury to help offset the money go for going to states, just so it's more accessible for kids and they don't feel discouraged. Wow, that's awesome. No one's left out. Yes, exactly. That's awesome. That's awesome. Is there any questions? Anybody have any questions? You guys ready for the stock market games tomorrow? <laughs> oh, does it start tomorrow? It does, yeah. <laughs> I saw a hand over here. Right. How many are in your club? So this year we have around 24 members, so we're very happy. What age do they start? Um, we actually welcome everybody to come to our meetings. Uh, more of the um, competitive events take place from ninth grade to 12th grade, but we welcome in 7th graders, 8th graders, and they just like to get hands-on experience. And a lot of our members are very active. We have 17 members this year who qualified for states, and that's, I think, one of the biggest numbers we've ever had. So. Oh, that's fantastic. That's fantastic. Wow. That's wonderful. Well, I'll tell you. Yes, Dean. Yeah, so uh, when's your next event coming up? So the State Leadership Conference is April 19th to April 21st, and that's in Rochester. So students right now are preparing for their competitive events, and that varies from presentation events to test taking and graphic design events. So. It's a pleasure. On behalf of the church, we'd like to uh, offer you a check. Thank you so Thank much. You to help support. Uh, I have to tell you, for me personally, and I'm sure I can speak for the rest of the group, I am extremely excited to see you young folks so involved and interacted with, with things that will impact your lives, of course, but more importantly, impact the lives of others. Uh, that's the mere existence why we're here, is to help one another and to support one another. So. Continue on your journey and let us know if there's anything we can do. I'd like to make this an annual event, uh, if we could, if you could bring that back. And uh, know that our heart and our love for you goes with you. So uh, it could, let's pray. Yeah. <clears throat> Creator God, we give you thanks and praise for this opportunity to share together these young folks that, that they have some direction. They don't necessarily know what that direction is, but they know that they can trust by supporting one another and to be there for one another. Help us to be an instrument, a vessel for them, to know that they're not alone, that they, they go by the strength of their classmates and their advisors, but they know that there is a church in town that is supporting and lifting them up. May they go in God's power and in God's peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Good job, guys.
To him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. I mention this often about if you are blessed by having a gift, shame on you for not using it. If you have the ability to teach, then teach. If you have the ability to be a financial expert, then be a financial expert. If you have the ability to be a, a builder, then be a builder. I swear that I had a plastic camera in my hand when I was in the birth canal. <laughs> because I believe, I believe God put me here to do just exactly what I did for 45 years. I never hesitated. I never second-guessed it. I loved my work and didn't feel as though I worked a day in my life. Because I loved it so much. We are to use the gifts that God gave us. Not your education. You can be a scholar. You can be a professor. You can have all the knowledge that you want. But somehow that came to you by way of God. And I've said, by shame on you for not using it. We are all gifted in special ways. And I just think of it, I'm going to get in trouble by doing this, but something that is a lost art today, and that is crocheting and knitting. It doesn't seem like many do that, and Tina does it so well. And I'm not going to mention everybody, so don't get mad at me. But she knits, and the things, the gloves and the hats, and it's just a lost art. But God has blessed her with that. And to take the time to do that, and, and to praise God, and that every one of those mittens or hats are formed through the grace of our Lord and Savior. Amen? Amen? When we keep our eyes focused on what God has for each one of us, we don't get stuck in the mud. We don't get left behind. We keep our eyes focused on why we're doing what we're doing. Why do we come to this building in Lake George? Why do we worship this Lord and Savior? Why do we do what we do? When we find the answer to that in our heart, we will find the way to Christ. Amen? Amen? We will find the way to Christ. Amen.